Now, getting out of bed, personal hygiene and getting dressed are things that most of us take for granted. But for thousands of disabled people throughout Scotland, they require help to do these basic functions. But for some disabled people in Glasgow who receive a community care service at home, they've seen up to a 50% increase in their financial contribution towards this personal care. Often these people are on benefits. Our reporter Ian Hamilton met one woman who is struggling to cope. I am kind of semi-paralysed from the neck down, which means I do need a lot of care. I need my breakfast brought to me, and it's as basic as that. I can only use one hand. I can't do most things. I, if you put a toothbrush in my hand and toothpaste, I can brush my teeth. But um, and other than that, there's very few things I can do for myself. But to me, it seems so incongruent that we can get that we can get a universal free access to museums, but we don't have universal free access just to get out of bed in the morning and get a drink of water. Glynis says she hasn't got many options if she can't afford to pay for her care, apart from one extreme solution. I can honestly say I would not put my husband in debt. Excuse me. Just so that we could stay living together, I would put myself in a home. So what would it cost them then? Andrew Lowe, the President of the Association of Directors of Social Work, joins us now from our Edinburgh studio. And here with me is Kirsten Rummery, who's Professor of Social Policy at the University of Stirling. Thank you both very much indeed for coming in. Uh, Professor Rummery, if we look first at um, the big picture here, is it the case that demand is steadily increasing while budgets are static or actually in, in effect reducing? I think that is definitely the case. It's definitely the case in Scotland and throughout the UK. Um, what isn't the case is that this is the only response to that kind of crisis. There are lots more, more creative solutions that local authorities could come up with um, rather than uh, putting charges directly or raising charges for effectively the same service directly. So what would these clients. solutions be then? I think it's clear the research shows that if um, local authorities work in partnership with disabled clients to um, manage budgets much more effectively, they can come up with creative solutions um, that meet their needs and meet and can create better outcomes uh, than the but social services. But for example, what, that they have family members working with them or, or it goes out to other agencies or what are the solutions? There are lots of other solutions and it will have to be very tailored obviously to independent individual people's needs. But yes, we need to be looking at people's capabilities, we need to be looking at drawing on families and communities much more effectively. This is one of the most fundamental crises to face social care since the oil crisis in the 1970s. And it's not going to be solved simply by devolving cuts and devolving spending wow. issues down onto service users themselves, who, as you saw in that report, are least able. To well, Andrew Lou, do you accept that this is such a significant crisis? Well, good evening, Isabel. Um, I do accept that this is a very challenging time that we're in, and as the president of the Association of Directors, I'm here to represent all of the uh, local authority directors in Scotland this evening. We um, have just had our conference in Creef and we had Pam uh, Duncan there as one of our guest speakers. We're very much aware of this. It's an acutely challenging issue for us. But I think it's important to, you would see in the statement from Glasgow that they do um, have regard to ability to pay and they do have, uh, and they have in place a review system so that charges can be reviewed and, and can be waived if that's right. appropriate. But, but Andrew, presumably uh, this is a problem across Scotland or will become a problem across Scotland. I mean, we focused on Glasgow but they made it clear that uh, other areas are the same. So even if you say in particular cases as things stand now we can review that or we can waive the charges but that cannot be some, a practice that goes on long term presumably. There have to be more dramatic solutions do you think? Well I think it's, in, it's, it's important to understand that ever since the creation of the welfare state it's been, um, the, there's been the potential to charge for local authority care services and uh, local authorities have had different approaches to doing that according to their needs and their own particular circumstances. But what um, we understand about modern social care services is that we want to, to, to co-produce them, to work with people who receive services so that we can get the best care for them. And often that requires an element of us um, making a charge and it also requires an element of us giving much more say to the people receiving the services right. about how those services are delivered. But so there's a bit of a contract here. Now, I felt terribly for 
Glenys and her circumstances, and she's clearly distressed by this. And I, I feel certain that Glasgow will want to talk further to her about her particular circumstance. But the truth is that local authorities have got an enormously challenging situation facing them, and we're wanting to modernise and transform services, make them more appealing to people so that they can be in more control. And part of the price for that is that um, we do have to levy some charges, and through yes. those charges, people can have more control. So, I, Pam Duncan spoke about it as a human rights issue. Well, there is a bit of a human rights issue about the ability to have some control over your service, and yeah. part of that is through paying for it. Okay, and but Professor, when you say there are a range of options, some people would say, well, actually, it's going to be extremely expensive if people have to go into a home, but there again, Perhaps you put a burden on relatives who cannot adequately care for people. I mean, if you care for people in their own homes, it can be expensive as well. I mean, what, how do you think this is resolved in the future? Does it have to be money coming out of the health budget, for example? I think that is one option that needs to be looked at. If you ring fence spending on the NHS and say that we're not going to cut spending on healthcare services, then it is social care that is going to take the hit. But also I take issue with this idea that simply by paying charges that you're going to be in co-production with service users. That's not true at all. Okay. Thank you both very much indeed for that. I'm sorry we have to leave it there. Thank you.